how great Oh, I see how great, how great this is, is our God. Come on, sing that with us. If you know he's great, come on, sing how great. sharing, first of all, from 2 Timothy, and I'm just giving you these right now because I want you to write them down for, so you can reference them later, but 2 Timothy, the third chapter, all these I'll share from the New King James Version of the Bible, 2 Timothy, the third chapter, and I'll be sharing verses 1 through 5. I'll also be sharing with you from John, the first chapter, verses, also verses 1 through 5. And then I want you all to literally find in your Bibles, if you're walking through with us this morning, if you would find uh, the book of Acts, the fourth chapter. And we'll begin our walk with the very first verse. Prior to a scriptural prayer, I will read those first two sections of scripture. Second Timothy, the third chapter, beginning with the first verse from the New King James Version of the Bible reads this way. It says, but know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Kind of sounds like modern day America, doesn't it? Having a form of godliness, and I want to make sure that we understand this. Verse 5 says, having a form of godliness, but denying its power, and from such people, the Bible gives us instruction, it says, from such people, turn away. Amen? Amen. The gospel according to John, amen, the first chapter beginning with the first verse says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him. And without him, nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. This is the word of the Lord. Let us all say amen. amen. Again, uh, these, these passages of scripture were made for scripture of reference. And we'll be, um, we'll be walking through Acts, the first chapter, beginning, excuse me, Acts, the fourth chapter, beginning with the first verse. Amen. And I want to share with you today uh, from the Word of God, uh, but I, if, if we were to give this a title this morning, our, our topic for today is Spread the Word. Amen? Amen? Spread the Word. Let us pray. Most holy and ever wise God, we thank you for allowing us to have the opportunity to come together today. God, we thank you that you've allowed us to have another opportunity to wake up, God, to, to give you glory, to give you honor, to give you praise. God, we pray that as we breathe in through our nostrils, God, that we, as we breathe out, God, Lord, we pray that as we have the activities of our limbs, God, as we're able to use uh, the facilities of our body, God, as we're able to sit in this auditorium today, God, as we're able to gather together as saints, as believers in you, God, we pray that you allow your Holy Spirit, God, to just fall within this place and allow us to feel your presence as we share in your word. God, allow us to use your scripture as instruction for our lives and not just words on the page of a large book. Lord, I pray that as we continue to press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus, God, I pray that as we continue to go ye therefore and teach all nations, God, I pray that as we continue to press towards the mark, God, and, and believe that you are with us every step of the way, as we continue to acknowledge you in all our ways and trust in you, God, I pray that you are glorified not only in our words, God, and not only in our song, but God, that you're glorified in our lives. 
God, show us the error of our ways. Allow us to see ourselves for who we really are, God, and not who the world paints us to be. God, allow us to compare ourselves to the instruction in your scripture. God, that we might grow, that we might continue to be glorifying of you in all that we do. God, I ask that you just remove me from this place completely right now in the name of Jesus. God, I ask that you anoint me from the top of my head to the soles of my feet, that your word might go forth into the hearts and the minds of your people, that we all might want to worship and praise you all the more, gain a closer relationship with you, and do what thus saith the Lord. This is our prayer, and we pray it in Jesus' name. Let us all say amen. 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 To God be the glory. Amen. So we're sharing from the topic. Spread the word. Amen? Amen? Amen. Keep your Bibles open to that Acts, the fourth chapter, because we'll spend some time walking there. But before I go to Acts and before uh, I begin to, to share what the Lord has laid on my heart, I want to share with you a story. Those of you who have been with me for a while, you, you've heard the story. This is a story that I, I sort of, I won't say stole, but I sort of borrowed from uh, my, my, uh, my previous pastor, my pastor, the pastor who licensed me. Uh, he told this story once of a of an instance where uh, there the, the city of, of New York, uh, who you know, we're, who's famous for for having Lady Lady Liberty to shine in its distance. And he told the story of how uh, Lady Liberty was shining in the distance, and there was a blackout in the city, and all of New York city went dark. All the area around went dark. All the area around Lady Liberty looked dark. And people were scrambling and trying to, uh, to, to find their way, trying to make sure that they were secure, trying to make sure that they weren't in danger in the midst of darkness. And off in the distance, out on an island, they're shown Lady Liberty. And, they, and, and after the blackout was over, they were trying to come to an understanding of how it was that the entire area had blackened out, how there was no light anywhere in the area, and off in the distance, they could still see Lady Liberty shining in all her glory. So there became an investigation, and through investigation, they, they started to find that, the, or what they found was that even though uh, Lady Liberty sat out on, on a New York island, her power source was actually in New Jersey. So she was not affected by the power outage because she was connected to a different power source. And my first word of encouragement for you today is make sure that in the midst of all the darkness that we're going through in this world, make sure that you're connected to the right power source. Amen. Make sure that in all we're dealing with, make sure that in all we're dealing with and all that we're going through, make sure that in all the craziness of the world that's around us, make sure uh, that in all in, in all the people who are stealing people, all the all the people who are talking about people, all the people who are disrespecting people, make sure that we don't get caught up. The Bible tells us to, to be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds. So uh, if you can't get anything else from me this morning or this afternoon as we uh, crawl over into the noonday hour, if you can't get anything else from me this morning, make sure that in all that you do, that you're connected to the right power source. Make sure that, that, that what you feed off of is not the press or the social media. Make sure that what you feed off of is, is not what other people are telling you or how other people try to hype you up. But make sure that you, you're rooted and grounded in the word of God. Make sure that the Holy Spirit of the Almighty God is what uh, or who you allow to guide you through your daily life. Because at the end of the day, when all this darkness be begins to succumb the world that we live in, we have to make sure that we're connected to the right power source. Amen? Amen. And, and so it's so important that we understand because uh, we have been tasked as those of us who profess to be Christians, those who, who call on the name of Jesus, those of us who, who really have an understanding of what it means to be a Christian, those of us who operate in ministry, those of us who work, uh, work around those in ministry, or I say this, all of us operate in ministry. We may have different responsibilities, but we all operate in ministry. And so it's important that all of us have an understanding of the task that lays at hand. As we jump right into Acts, the fourth chapter, we find that, that this is after the crucifixion of Christ. And we find that uh, that that we uh, we find Peter and John in an instance instance where, as verse one of of uh, or, or the beginning verses of chapter four would say, it says, "Now as they spoke to the people." So let me paint a picture for you here. Jesus has been crucified and resurrected, and and, and in the midst of the people, Peter and John are going out to spread the word. Amen. They're going out to continue to share what it is that thus saith the Lord. They're out telling the folks about the goodness of Jesus Christ. They're out sharing with the folk, amen, about all the things that are capable if you have a relationship with Christ, amen, just as we ought to be doing. We ought to be out sharing with the people, amen, spreading the word, sharing with the people what ought to be done, amen, or, or how we can benefit from a relationship with Christ. And so it says, now, as they spoke to the people, the priest, 
the captain of the temple, I like to say the religious folk, amen, the, the captain of the temple uh, and the Sadducees came upon them. It says, and being greatly disturbed, they were taught, uh, excuse me, they taught the people and preached in Jesus the resurrection from the dead. And they laid their hands on them and put them in custody until the next day, for it was already evening. Amen. I'm going to give you several points throughout the course of this. As I told you, I'm teaching this morning. Praise God. But point number one, you all write this down. If we're going to continue, amen, to, to press towards the mark, if we're, if we're going to continue to, to be who it is that does say the Lord says us, that we should be, here's your point. Stop expect, expecting people who have never experienced Jesus to understand Jesus. Amen. We have to stop expecting people who have never experienced Jesus. To understand Jesus. And oftentimes what's discouraging to us is we, we have a belief in Jesus Christ. We have a belief in the Holy Spirit of God. We have a, a, a belief in the Holy Trinity. And we get discouraged when we work to share Jesus with people. And people either don't comprehend or don't understand what we're talking about to a point where they're willing to connect with Jesus. We have to stop expecting people who have never experienced Jesus to understand Jesus. But we have to get to a place where in our lives Christ is glorified. We have to get to a place where in the things that we do Christ is glorified. Where in him we live and we breathe and we have our being. So that when others look upon us, amen, especially our young people. When others look upon us, they look upon us and they see the works of God. They see the life of Christ. They see the way that Christ moved and the way that he talked because we are living examples of how he is and how, uh, how he did things while he was here on earth. And if we can do that, we don't have to expect people who haven't experienced Christ to understand Christ. But as I said earlier, the songwriter said, we may be the only Jesus that some of this generation will ever see. And that does not mean that we have the perfection of Christ, but it means that we are given the task of modeling Christ in our everyday lives. Amen. Amen. So we have to, as the songwriter again said, we have to mind how we walk and mind how we talk and mind how we live and mind how we give. We have to be an example of Christ in every way. We got to get right, church. Amen. So here's, here's the thing. We got to stop expecting people who never experienced Jesus to understand Jesus. We got to stay focused on spreading the word. Now, as I talk about spreading the word, I'm going back to that John, which says, in the beginning was the word and the word was God. And the word, excuse me, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was the beginning, he was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. So scripture itself tells us that darkness will not comprehend the light. And we understand Christ to be the light. Amen. So as we continue to work towards sharing Christ with the world, understand, or, or spreading the word, we have to understand that Jesus himself was the word manifested here on earth. Amen? Jesus, Jesus wasn't just a person, but he was the walking, talking, living, breathing word. Verified by John, amen, one and one, which says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So he was God himself, and God manifested in the word so that he could walk among us and be a true living example of the word. So we have to stop expecting people who never experienced Jesus to understand Jesus. We just got to stay focused on spreading the word. Amen? And Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men. So if we continue to spread the word, I mean, then we don't have to worry about whether or not they've ever experienced Christ because they were, will experience him through us. Amen? Amen. Verse 4, verse 4 alone, I read this to you. It says, however, many of those who heard the word believed, and a number of men came to uh, be about 5,000. Amen? Here's point number 2. When we're focused on spreading the word, we never know who's actually listening. And oftentimes, we get caught up in trying to, uh, uh, trying to receive a response or trying to make sure that uh, someone has, has said something or done something left to let us know that they understood what we were saying when we shared Christ. Amen. But we've got, to, we've got to focus on spreading the word and understand that as we spread the word, we never know who's actually listening. Now notice what I said. I said listening. I didn't say we never know who actually hears us. I said we don't know who's actually listening. Reminds me of when my father, just before he passed away, my father was in Duke Hospital, amen, and, and, and I was standing next to his bedside, and he, 
uh, he, he had just come out of surgery and he was sharing with me. He was saying, son, you know, he started to give me tasks that I, I needed to make sure that I took, I took care of around the house. And he was saying, you know, son, make sure you do this and make sure you do this. And, you know, son, make sure you put this over here and make sure every week you do this and every month you do this. He started to share these things with me. Not at the time. I didn't, I wasn't aware this time that he wasn't going to come out of the hospital. But at the time we knew that for and during, uh, in his condition, he may be incapacitated for a while. So he began to give me instruction for his absence. Can I tell you that that's what scripture serves as for us? It, ter- it serves as instruction. So even though we don't see God every day, we know that he's present, but he gives us instruction. Amen. And that instruction is uh, for us to know that even though we know he's here in spirit, amen, we don't have to focus on the fact that he's here, but we can allow him to work through us. Amen. To do what work the kingdom needs to be. But my father gave me that instruction. And, and, and so I said to my father, I never forget this. I was 21 years old, standing next to his hospital bed. And I said, Daddy, you taught me a whole lot of things in 21 years. And I said, I heard you. And my father looked up from his hospital bed. And he said to me, I know you heard me. But were you listening? And so I say this to you today. The word of God is speaking to us in our daily lives. Amen. Preachers, we're speaking to our congregations. Amen. Ministers, we're speaking to those who we get an opportunity to minister to. Amen. Saints and friends, everybody that we have an opportunity to share in Christ with. And, you know, I know you hear me. You don't have a choice but to hear me because I'm loud. But are you listening? Are we listening to a point where we're we're having life application? Are we listening to a point where uh, where our daily activities we're taking a moment to do, as the Bible would say, we're, we're letting a man examine himself? Are we examining ourselves? Are we applying uh, the words of the Bible? Are we applying the Holy Scriptures to our lives so that our lives are changed? Hey, here's a quiz for you. If, you're, if you've been in Christ for years and you're still doing the same things, the same way that you were doing when you first came to Christ, something's wrong. Amen. If you're still praising God or not praising God the same way, amen. If you're still coming at the same time, sitting in the same place, not clapping or clapping at the same time, if you become religious in your structure, if you become traditional in your praise, amen, something's wrong. Because at some point in time in your years with Christ, amen, there should have been some kind of change in your experience. Amen. Something should have happened. Paul Morton, I believe, sings that. He says, Jesus, something happens when I call. Amen. We ought to be at a place where we're experiencing God for who he really is. And so many times people sit in the seats or sit in the pews or sit in the chairs or stand in the aisles. And and we dance and we shout and we holler and we scream. But we don't really have an experience with God. We have a form of godliness, but we deny the power thereof. Amen. That's not why we're here, folks. But we're here for the purpose of experiencing God for who he is. That's why we named this place the Kingdom Center. Amen? And that's why we're here. We're here to seek a kingdom experience. Amen? And I pray that as we go on week after week, day after day, month after month, I pray that as we continue to press, that the experience changes. So maybe week one, we were nervous about what we were doing. Maybe week two, we were, you know, we were insecure about what we were doing. Amen. But as we continue to move forward, they ought to become a praise on the inside. Amen. That you can't keep to yourself. We ought to get to a place where we understand that the reason that we got up this morning was because God is so good. Amen. We ought to be able to understand that the reason that we have that job to go to is because God is so good. Amen. We ought to get to a place that we're, where we understand that the reason that the accident didn't take our lives was because God is so good. And so we got to continue to focus on spreading the word. And we can't expect people who've never experienced Jesus to understand. But we got to keep creating that experience. Bible says this, Hebrews 11 and 6 says he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. How many of us can say that we're diligent in our seeking of God? Or do we we allow the simplest of situations to turn us another way? I encourage you today, continue to press. See, the scripture says press towards the mark for a reason. It doesn't say walk towards the mark. It doesn't say go towards the mark. It says press towards the mark. And the reason it says press towards the mark is because you're going to receive some pressure when you're trying to reach the mark. You got to get through some things. You got to get over some things. But stay focused on spreading the word. Amen? Verse 4. Amen. Excuse me. Skipping down. Um. I lost my place, Lord. I got caught up. However, many of those who heard the word believed, and a number of men came, 5,000 
Praise God. And I already shared that with you. Going on down to verse 5, it says, And it came to pass on the next day, their rulers, elders, and scribes. We're going back to the religious folk again. The rulers, elders, and scribes, as well as Annas and the high priest Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and as many as were a family of the high priest were gathered together at Jerusalem. And when they had set them in the midst, they asked, By what power or by what name have you done this? Here's point number three. Religion will question the authority of your relationship. Amen? Religion will question the authority of your relationship. And one of the things that we have to do when we start to press, or one of the things that we have to do when we start to, uh, to push our way out of uh, and, and I want I want to understand I want us to understand completely what I'm talking about here. Uh, oftentimes, when we talk about religion, everybody everybody their minds immediately go uh, to the church. Amen. But can I tell you that we brush our teeth prayerfully, religiously. Amen. We go to work religiously. We get up a certain time of the day religiously. We interact with each other religiously. So I tell you that you know, husbands, you can't tell your wives at the same time every day that you love her. Amen. Break it up sometimes. You can't take her to the same restaurant every week. Amen. But sometimes we got we to gotta change that thing up a little bit. Even in our service of God, even in, in our worship, we can't do it the same way every week. I've shared this with you all for years. Because if we continue to do things the same way at the same time over and over again, religiously, the enemy knows what time we're going to do what we're going to do. So it doesn't take much for him to come in and to throw a wrinkle in our plans. So every once in a while, you got to change up your pitch. Amen. You can't keep throwing in fastballs. Every once in a while, you got to throw that rascal a curve. Amen. You got to be like, no, no, you got to throw him a slider every once in a while. Every once in a while, instead of, you know, instead of clapping at the same time, every once in a while, you got to stand up in your seat and give God some glory. You got to open your mouth and shout to the Almighty God. Because religion will question the authority of your relationship. And if you're not careful, people sitting around you will look at you and, and, and they'll try to understand why it is that even though uh, you've been through such and such in your life or you've done such and such in your life, amen, you still have a right. I preached that week one. You still have a right to praise the Almighty God. But I came by to tell you that I don't care how much hell you've caused or how much hell you've been through, you can still praise God. Amen. I don't care how many roads you've been down that were wrong and how many roads you've been down that were right. The Bible gives us very simple instruction. It says, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. The Bible didn't, doesn't say, let the preacher praise the Lord. It doesn't say, let the evangelist praise the Lord. It doesn't say, let the apostle or the teacher, amen. It doesn't say, let any of them, it doesn't say, let them praise the Lord. It says, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Amen. Everybody do me a favor real quick. Breathe in, breathe out. And since you're breathing, you got a right to praise God. Amen. But can I tell you, that's not limited to us. Because y'all got to think about it. You know, and, and the, scripture, the scripture alludes to this. Amen. Even the birds of the field. Amen. Or the, excuse me, the lilies of the field, the birds of the air. Amen. The creatures of the earth all have bread. And so God gave the command not only to us, but he gives the command to all the world, the plants of the earth. Amen. Everything that have breath. And even though plants may breathe something different than us, God made it so that they rely on what we breathe and we rely on what they breathe. Amen. And because we all breathe, we all have a right to praise God. So don't sit in nobody's church and allow somebody to know something about your past and tell you that you can't give God some glory. Because sometimes the reason that you have a right to give God some glory is because you've been through some hell in your life and it won't nothing but God that brought you through. But religion will question the authority of your relationship. And many of us have been in situations where we've sat back and we've looked around and, and, and we know that folks are looking at us because they know who we used to be or they know what we used to do or they know what we used to go or they know what we used to drink or they know what we used to smoke and they look at us and they say, you ain't got no business praising God, amen? But I give you authority today in the name of Jesus to lift your hands, to clap your hands, to wave your hands, to open your mouth, to give God some glory. Because religion has no right to question the authority of your relationship. And the Bible tells us this. The Bible says you work out your own salvation. In other words, what you went through to get to the place where you are in God, ain't nobody's business but yours and God's. But I say this to you today. 
once he brings you through or once he brings you out, amen, give him glory for it. In all thy ways acknowledge him and allow him to direct your path. And some of us have been through some stuff in our lives and we have not yet given God the glory for bringing us out. Some of us have been through some things in our lives and we have not given God the praise for bringing us out. But can I tell you that there's a praise on the inside that you can't simply keep to yourself. There's a hollow stirring up, amen, in the depths of my soul. To God be the glory. Verse 8 says, Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day are judged for a good deed done to the helpless man, by what means he has been made well, let it be known to you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man stands here before you whole. Now, let me, let me give you some context here. There was a man standing, standing among them who Jesus had healed. Amen? And so Peter alludes to uh, this man, and he lets them know. He says to them, you know, uh, this man stands before you whole. Amen? Amen. Let me give you, I'm, I'm going to skip on down. I'm going to give you my next point. I'm going to finish that scripture. Here's point number four. It's not us. It's not up to us to debate with haters. Amen? And some of y'all got some haters in your life. It's not up to us to debate with haters. Let the word speak for himself. Stay focused on spreading the word. Amen. I'll say that again. It's not up to us to debate with haters. Let the word speak for himself. Stay focused on spreading the word. Peter tells them, he says, rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we this day are judged, for a good deed done a, uh, to a helpless man, by what means he has made well, he has been made well, let it be known to you all, to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom, you, uh, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man stands before you whole. This is the stone which was rejected by you builders, which has become the chief cornerstone, nor is it their salvation in any other. For there is no other name under heaven among men by men, uh, excuse me, by which men must be saved. Amen? It's not up to us to debate with haters. Amen? And there are going to be some people, with, especially, let me say this, especially if you have a checkered past. Amen? And I'm not hating on you if you had a checkered past, because guess what? All have sinned and come short of his glory. But can I tell you that if you take the time to read through biblical history, there was a whole lot of jokers that had some checkered past. Amen? It was a whole lot of jokers that had some checker pass. Amen? Can we talk about King David for a minute? Amen? David was a king, and, 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 and David was, when did David pass it or was taking a census? David wanted to know, amen, how many people he had. And David got caught up standing on the rooftop of the kingdom. Amen? He saw a woman bathing, and he knew she was somebody else's wife. Amen? But, but he wanted, he had to have her anyway. Praise God. Y'all with me? He had to have her anyway, praise God. So David was so shady that David sent her husband out on the front lines to make sure that he got killed. And, and, and because when, when, when he called her back in and tried to get him to, to sleep with his own wife because he wanted, to, he wanted him to think that the baby she was carrying was his, amen, this man was so dedicated to the cause that he wouldn't even do that. So David sent him out to get killed so that he didn't feel guilty for his own actions. Can I tell you this? And this is not one of my points, but I got to give you this as a side note. Sometimes what folks do to you has nothing to do with you. they just trying to cover their own mess. Amen? Sometimes what folks do to you, sometimes the reason that folks are hating on you has nothing to do with you. It's just that folks are trying to cover their own mess. And it's easier for, you, for them to pull you down to where they are than for them to lift themselves up to where you are. Amen? And we as people of God, we as, as people of the church, I'll say, uh, it, we sometimes are, are like crabs in a barrel. If you've ever seen crabs in a barrel, one, one crab will crawl up and the other crab behind him will grab him by the leg and snatch him back down. We can be that way because for some reason there's something in us that doesn't want to see anybody else get elevated. We just want to keep everybody else religiously stuck. Yeah. Amen? But it's not up to us to debate with haters. Let the word speak for himself. And stay focused on the word. Amen? 
Amen. Verse 13 says, Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled. And they realized that they had been with Jesus. And seeing the man who had been healed standing with them, they, couldn't, they could say nothing against it. But when they had commanded them to go outside of the council, they conferred among themselves, saying, What shall we do to these men? For indeed, uh, that a notable miracle has been done through them is evident to all who dwell in Jerusalem, and we cannot deny it. But so, it, so that it spreads no further among the people, let us severely threaten them that from now on they speak to no man in his name. Verse, uh, here's here's uh, point number five. Improper religion and tradition will cause people to witness the power of Christ, but fight, fight the promotion. Improper religion and tradition will cause people to witness the power of Christ, but fight the promotion of Christ. Now, there's a reason why I said improper religion and improper tradition. Because I say to you that all religion is not bad. And all tradition is not bad. There are some things that we traditionally and religiously do that are okay. There are some things that are great. But we cannot allow our religious acts to, to, to supersede our following of the Holy Spirit of God. Amen? We cannot get so caught up in what we do all the time that we refuse to follow the Spirit of the Lord. You never know when the Spirit of the Lord might be telling you to take a different route to work because the Spirit of the Lord wants to protect you from an accident that, you, that, the, that the enemy set up for you to have ahead. But you're so caught up in how you get there every day that you don't want to change your route. Now when it happens, you're trying to figure out why it is or how it is that God allowed this to happen in your life. And God is sitting back saying, I told you to go a different way, but you wouldn't listen. Scripture tells us, we loosely translate the scripture to say God inhabits the praises of his people. You don't know how many times God is, has, has inspired you to praise him, but you looked around at other folk and won't nobody else praising him, so you wouldn't clap your hands, or you wouldn't lift your hands, or you wouldn't open your mouth. And God was trying to deliver you from the hell that you were going through, amen, and it had nothing to do with the folk around you, but because you were caught up. Improper religion and tradition will cause people to witness the power of Christ, but fight the promotion. And I've said this for years. Religion will cause us, tradition will cause us to hear the word of God, to see it working, to feel the power of Christ, and refuse to follow it because it's not what we commonly do. Again, this is not one of my points, but here's another side note. I mean, we can't get caught up I mean, in what we do. We got, we got to get out of our comfort zone. And I've shared this with you all for years. Truly serving God is going to make you uncomfortable sometimes. See, if I had stayed comfortable, I'd still be uh, ushering in the old church, in, in my old church. I mean, if I had stayed comfortable, I'd still be in the choir. If I, was if I had stayed comfortable, I'd still be a trustee. If I had stayed comfortable, I'd have kept doing the things, amen, that were easy to do for me. Amen. But God called me to another place. And Pastor, I'm sure you have, uh, I'm sure, and, and Reverend Glenda, my wife as well, uh, Sharon, I'm sure you all have the same testimony. When God called me to preach his word, I said, no, 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 I ain't doing that. In fact, I'll tell y'all this, and I've shared this with you, for you all have been with me for a while, I've shared this. When God called me, the house I was living in at the time had a sunroom that looked over a lake. I used to live at Lake Royale. And, and, and when God called me to preach, I sat in that sunroom and looked over the lake, and I was talking out loud. I thought I was losing my mind. And I said, God, I will sing all over the globe for you, but I ain't preaching for nobody. That's what I said. That's literally, I said it out loud. And can I tell you that, that your comfort zone will keep you in a place where you can't experience God the way that you ought to. And can I tell you, from right then, how hell started to break loose in my life, and I can hear God saying, you know what? You don't have to be obedient to me, amen? But I don't have to protect you from the things that I'm keeping you from. So you can make a choice. So finally, after going through some things, I decided to give in. Y'all see who won that battle, praise God. Amen? But we've got to get to a place where we don't allow improper religion and tradition to cause people to witness the power of Christ and fight against his promotion. Amen? Jesus said again, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men to me. Amen? We don't have to, we don't have to worry about 
uh, the, the theatrics of, of, of church. We don't have to worry about all the, uh, you know, all the, all the, the, the theater things that, that people are doing now in church. And don't get me wrong, I ain't hating on nobody that got the resources to do all that stuff. Praise be to God, I, I, I bless God for them. Amen? But what I'm saying is God told us very plain and simply. Jesus said, if I be faithful over a few things. Amen? So all God is saying is, while you're here in this place, amen, give him some glory. While you're here where you are right now, give him some praise. And some of you are going through some things right now. Some of you are dealing with some things right now. Amen? And you keep trying to figure out how in the world you're going to get out of them. And God said, just open your mouth and give me some praise. Amen? Some of us are dealing with some stuff right now. Some of us have some things that we just can't seem to fight through right now. And we keep trying to figure out how it is that we're going to make it through. Some of us have some needs right now. And we keep trying to figure it out. How are we going to make it through? And God is very plain and simply saying, just praise me. Just call on my name. Just lift up my son. And because we know he inhabits the praises of his people, and because we know that his perfection can't come into contact with imperfection, we know that his praises go up, and we know that the blessing that comes down is his presence. And his presence will drive out the darkness, amen, by simply allowing the light to come in. Amen? We can't allow improper religion and tradition to cause people to witness the power of Christ, but fight the promotion. I'm quoting songwriters this morning. If he's done anything for you, you ought to run and tell that. Yeah. Amen. They say in the hood, say, don't be scared. You ought to run and tell that. Tell folk, tell somebody yeah. what God has done for you. Yeah. Verse 18 says, so they called them and commanded them not to speak at all, nor to teach in the name of Jesus. But Peter and John said to them, whether it is right in the sight of God to listen to you more than God, you judge. For we cannot speak the things which we have seen and heard. So when they had, excuse me, so then when they had further threatened them, they let them go, finding no way of punishing them because of the people, since they all glorified God for what had been done. For the man was over 40 years old on whom the miracle had been, uh, of healing had been performed. Here's my last point. They can argue and debate with you, but they cannot argue and debate with the word. Right. Amen. And Pastor, here's, here's a word that, that I've shared for years, and I pray, and, and I know you know this, but I pray that it blesses you uh, as you come from where you come from and as you're going where you're going. They can argue and debate with you all they want to, but they cannot argue and debate with the word. Amen? So to you, Pastor, I say this. As you go into your next venture, and I know you're going to meet new people, and you're going to meet, and you're going to experience new things, and it's going to be a new venture, and some of the things that you experience in making, you'll experience in Bun. And some of the things you see in Bun will be things you've never seen before. But just remember, no matter who they are, no matter what their title may be, no matter who they've been connected to, no matter what family they're a part of, amen, no matter who gives the biggest offering or the biggest tithe, remember this. They can argue and debate with you, but they cannot argue and debate with the word. Stay focused. On spreading the word. And I share with you all, I know sometimes, I know sometimes folk come up against what you believe. Y'all ever wondered this, and I wonder this all the time. Y'all ever wonder why it is that people who don't believe in Christ spend so much time trying to prove that, that he's not real? Hey Amen. If you don't believe, that's fine. Go on with your life. But stop attacking what I believe because it's not what you believe. Hey Amen. I'm going to share what I believe, and if it's not what you believe, then prayerfully over time, I mean prayerfully, maybe I can share something with you that will encourage you to, to, to look for a connection. But until then, stop trying to be a hater. Amen? Stop trying to dog my place in God. Because they can, you can argue and you can debate with me, but you cannot argue and debate with the Word of God. Because God is not a man that he should lie. And so there's 66 books of instruction that we have been made privy to. And I say this to you, they can argue and debate with the word, excuse me, with you, but they cannot argue and debate with the word. Amen? So as a closing note, I say to you, stay focused and keep spreading the word. Amen? Amen. Come on, give God some praise.
You have been listening to your radio host, Pastor Clint Wilkins, on the Kingdom Center Radio Show. Join us again next Monday afternoon at 12 noon. We hope that you've had a great, fantastic lunch break. Amen. With an encouraging word. We pray the blessings of the Lord again for you and your family. And we want you to continue to support this radio ministry each and every week. We are broadcasting live. You also can hit the replay if you missed any of the live broadcasts. You can go back and listen 24-7. 24-7. You also can share this to email by copy and paste the link. And again, we thank you from the bottom of our hearts. We love you and make it a wonderful, wonderful Monday.